Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at Venom the Duck. So it is quite many of my subscriber favorite champion and uh, quite rightfully so because he's a very specific champion. Uh, the base idea he is a ramp up champion. Each fight you can uh, kind of like save up to three buffs and then you can carry them over from fight to fight you have a maximum of 10 buffs you can save from each fight and uh, you have a chance of gaining six different buffs they go uh, as follows power gain fury uh, regeneration uh, precision uh, perfect block chance and armor typically the three you focus on most is the fury power gain and regeneration because all of these three combined make him for one hell of a powerhouse however the fact that uh, you want to focus only on 50 percent of his buffs also make him fairly rng reliant and i will try my best uh, to explain right now exactly why it is so because you have no control over in what order these buffs appear and uh, the base idea is you have that uh, counter on the left side uh, which is constantly ticking up and uh, you can increase the speed of that counter by dropping your level once that gives it a fairly sizable chunk uh, but still you never control which buff appears so, so sometimes it always can be the case that you uh, get 10 buffs in a row and none of them are the ones you want to save and that uh, okay can make for a frustrating buildup. Uh, however, for vast majority of the fights, uh, statistically, every other buff is going to be one of the ones that you are looking for. Uh, you have basically one in a six chance to get the exact buff that you are looking for, but whenever you want to ramp up Venom the Duck, ideally you look for regen, fury, and power gain. Uh, in no specific order and uh, in order to save these buffs you either can throw level one or level two attack and they will immediately remove buff from you however that will save it in your rna bank or you can just drop your uh, heavy attack now uh, level one is uh, largely used to simply accelerate the rate you gain your buffs because when you drop your level one it kind of siphons and uh, that means it uh, basically increases your counter and you get your next buff quicker and level two places a toxic armor now toxic armor i am going to talk a bit later on in the video however there we could see that in the uh, black bolt fight that was our initial ramp up fight it took nearly 100 hits for uh, rank 3 5 star in act 5 so the first fight is always fairly painful depending on uh, what order you get your buffs and how lucky you are it can uh, either drag extremely long or it can be relatively all right like in black bolt fight i had to dance about in order to make sure i can save a decent amount of uh, buffs and the ones that i want to save now uh, for the second fight quite often it is really easy because whenever uh, you drop your heavy special attack you can save uh, these buffs that you have active already you start the second fight with the buffs from first fight already so it means you can pretty much immediately drop a heavy attack or special attack if you are happy with the selection of your buffs and uh, that will automatically save the following three so the first fight really is a crucial one second fight it also can be relatively long but it's gonna be much easier to keep ramping him up if you did a good job in your first fight uh however and uh, now we can talk about that toxic armor he has on his level two and uh, that basically places two armor up buffs on opponent it has a 70 percent chance uh, on each of the kind of like egg hits to place armor buff on opponent sometimes you will get unlucky and you won't place any uh, but typically you place one or two armor up buffs on opponent and then also while as long these buffs are active uh, you deal extra damage based on opponent's armor level not just based on these uh, your placed buff level so if you're fighting someone with a lot of armor or on an armor node you can deal some insanely crazy damage with venom the duck i also have a display on my channel where we kind of cheesed uh aggression armor node where a two star venom the duck i think or a three star venom the duck did some crazy insane amount of damage now in this fight i do make a mistake because as we can see i drop my heavy attack here however the buffs that uh when the duck saves uh basically he prioritizes the buffs that are closer to the left side so we saved two regenerations and one fury and i was kind of hoping for the opposite so for the third fight quite often depending on what order you gained your initial buffs and uh, how they are placed uh in your hut up there uh you want to kind of like 
uh, skip the initial burst of damage and start looking for the remaining buffs that you do want to save yourself. You do not often uh, want to take the quick route out because in this case I'm going to end up with uh, four regeneration, three furies and two power gains when ideally I would like the power gain to be reversed with regeneration because four regeneration buffs is just a bit excessive but we will have a good chance to demonstrate that later on in the video as well. But that coincidentally is also one of the nice things about Venom the Duck, that there is a lot of customization available, you can prioritize power gain, regeneration, fury, so on and so forth. Uh, basically you can build him up however you want, you can add some armor buffs if you are expecting to face Havoc for instance, and then you can save yourself from those plasma detona detonations. Another thing that I did not mention, but we will be able to showcase on later on in the video, is the fact that uh, Venom the Duck has a chance to bleed the opponent on his basic hit, which is always nice uh, but the quite exciting bit is that uh, if opponent happens to be bleed immune you place a passive degen instead and that is fantastic I wish more bleed champions would have similar sorts of ability and the fact that it is passive is just such a great addition I absolutely love it it definitely comes in handy also the fact that your level 2 places buffs on opponent not debuffs uh, basically makes uh, Venom the Duck quite a bit more versatile and he's not as often subject to struggle versus stuff like masochism so on and so forth uh, however uh, here we can see that once Venom the Duck has been amped up uh, he can dispatch opponents incredibly incredibly quickly so not only he has four region buffs on currently at the beginning of every fight which let me regain incredibly huge amount of health we also have great damage output we can reach our level three attack if we choose to within like 20 hits or so uh, so in like four combos so that is crazy increased power gain and uh, the good thing is uh, i haven't even started talking about level three attack yet and level three attack simply takes all of these buffs you get at the beginning of the fight and refreshes and kind of replaces on you so you can choose to fight in two different manners basically with venom the duck once he's amped up you can either take the initial burst of damage drop your level two and try and drop your opponent uh just then and there uh, with your toxic armor because your damage will be increased quite heavily and level two is the special attack that deals most damage or you can just keep spamming special threes and keep getting these buffs back and you keep getting your regeneration back and you get from level three to level three with an extremely short amount of time because of increased power gain and you have increased attack and you basically have good time overall now at the end of last fight i did get hit by gwenpool and that pretty much dropped me to 50 percent however we can see that how aggressively when the dark regeneration can work and uh, basically at the beginning of next fight once these region buffs expire i'm already back to almost 90 percent health and if i chose to i could have dropped my level 3 attack and i would have re-triggered all of these regenerations and I would have healed back to full. So that region on Venom the Duck is one of the main reasons why so many people love him, just because he's extremely sustainable champion, and he is, in fact, a champion that can potentially save you a lot of potions as you are exploring uh, Act 5 or possibly at some place in Act 6. Definitely Variant 2, where Extra Large Champions are uh, especially powerful. So as we can see in this video, Venom the Duck is a champion that starts out uh, relatively slow, actually quite incredibly slow, and uh, his uh, lackluster base damage output combined with the fact that he is slightly RNG champion will make your initial fight or two fairly big struggle. And uh, that is the reason why so many people shy away from the champion, including myself. I'm not a big fan of the fact that you have to be so patient every single time you enter the quest uh, however once he is amped up he's actually one of the more capable champions in the game uh, definitely one of the more sustainable ones he yeah he has a lot of potential and a lot of customization built in him he can be extremely versatile and he can definitely carry you through a lot of content uh, however, uh, he doesn't really have any immunities, which is a downside, uh, but uh, there are still plenty of good or great champions who don't have immunities, namely, let's say, Domino. Uh, however, he does have a lot of su survivability, he does have a lot of regeneration, uh, power gain, a lot of good stuff going for him, and he is definitely worth all the buzz he got uh, as soon as Variant 2 came out. 
Uh, now, as far as my personal feelings and opinions go uh, for this champion, it is in fact quite simple. He's high effort, high reward kind of character. He might not be the most suited champion for, let's say, Alliance War or uh, quite a bit of endgame content as well. However, for a uh, majority of the progressing players who are willing to put in effort it takes to ramp him up time after time, every single quest, he will in fact save you a lot of potions and he is a fantastic champion for up and coming players who are clearing Act 4, Act 5, uh, stuff like that. Uh, probably a lot of uncollected stuff as well. He's going to be fantastic in Variant 2 and uh, he is going to help you a lot. Now, for me personally, he is only at rank 3 and he probably will stay there uh, for foreseeable future just because I have plenty of options and choice in my roster. Now, if my roster was smaller and I would look for a really kind of heavy workhorse of a character, kind of similar to what Hyperion is to a degree because he can just take on so many different things, I think Venom the Duck would fill uh, that in quite nicely uh, just because, yeah, he is not the easiest champion to ramp up. It's gonna get old, it's gonna get annoying, it's gonna get frustrating, uh, you're gonna get tired of it yourself. However, if you are there willing to stick through it, willing to put in the work to ramp him up, he's going to save you incredible amount of potions. He's going to save you incredible amount of uh, headache against some bosses and stuff like that, just because he can mince through fights so quickly. As we can see here, it's a rank 3 five-star champion. It's only also just about SIG 40. Additionally, he isn't really reliant on any of the synergies. There are a few that are kind of nice to have, but none of them kind of make or break him as a character. Like, he's not a part of any so-called, like, trinities. Like, Domino needs her support team to be outstanding, and Ghost uh, quite often is regarded as a champion that needs synergies, and so on and so forth. However, uh, when the Duck is just a great standalone character, you can take in a quest and uh, just mince the entire quest with him. Now, one thing to mention though, uh, he's also kind of like a bit of a selfish champion because typically when you take him in the quest means you need to find a spot where to ramp him up and you won't keep using him in fight after fight, fight after fight. And uh, quite a lot of times when you have one of the Duck and we have ramped him up, uh, no other champions you kind of bring along with you typically will get too much game time. And uh, I'm not too often a big fan of that, I suppose. Uh, that's also kind of like my beef on uh, rank up champions quite often is just because they require you to constantly keep playing them throughout pretty much the entire quest to have them ranked up by the end of it. As a bare minimum, Venom the Duck basically needs kind of like three fights to be ranked up, uh, arguably the fourth one to get the tenth buff, but uh, you guys know what I mean. And once again, I decided to showcase kind of like an early ramp up fight against this uh, Stun Immune Ultron to kind of like show that it is work. You don't know what buffs you are gonna get. You don't know uh, what order they're gonna come. All also, while these buffs are active, you're kind of limited in the way you can play because you can't throw your special attacks willy-nilly because if a buff you do not desire is active and you drop a heavy attack or a special attack, then that buff is going to get saved. And if you save a buff that you do not like, then it automatically makes the second fight harder just because, uh, yeah, you're going to have to kind of handpick all of the 10 buffs in order not to duplicate on this one. However, here you can see that we did get uh, quite decent RNG. We did get uh, two of the three buffs that we preferred and uh, that is like quite good. And now the third buff is coming and it's perfect. We basically got three out of four buffs that we liked and we are pretty much in a situation where we amped him up quite quickly. So sometimes the RNG can uh, work out really well for you. Other times it's going to be extremely frustrating, you're going to get angry and very early in the quest. However, uh, once again, when it comes for actual questing, remember that you can always redo the first fight if things don't go your way or if you mess up. And that is like a big help for uh, Venom the Duck, in my opinion, because uh, when you take him in, uh, the first fight is a critical one. All depends on RNG. However, the first fight for Venom the Duck, 
quite often will be the first fight in the quest so you can always just quit and back out and come back in again and try and have a better fight and try and have a better rng if you did not uh, in the first go around and now we're going to take a look at the second fight how much easier the second fight will be already compared to the first one so first one even with good rng did still take us a uh, quite while so here at this point we do have two power gains and uh, a fury buff immediately i can simply drop my special attack or heavy attack and i saved all of them up and i'm perfectly happy with what i have saved up it's going to be four power gains two furies means i'm going to have insane power rate uh, further on from this fight and two furies are going to give me really solid kind of attack increase as well now once again for third fight ideally i do not really want to to save my previous buffs i want to mix in a region so i would spend uh, most of the fight in the third fight kind of like looking for that region or for a single fury buff uh, to save in my rna bank uh, however yeah this fight even with that region that he got is over already at 55 hits which isn't too bad at all for a rank 3 character and now to kind of close out uh, the video we will showcase this rank 3 when with the duck against final boss of act 5 that annoying ultron and that ultron has a lot of armor buffs and when with the duck likes it a lot he likes it a lot definitely because that increases his damage output which is exactly what we're going to showcase here now i will mess up and unfortunately die when he's going to be at about four percent health i believe or something like that uh so it is not a full solo and i didn't feel like kind of like redoing entire quest line to try and get that solo in back up uh, however you guys will see the point that this is rank 3 win of the duck final boss of act 5 is getting absolutely minced down obviously you still have to be wary of the weights you still have to be careful of the power gain and all the other stuff uh, but thanks to toxic armor and the fact that uh, this guy gains a lot of armor buffs himself, uh, you can definitely out damage that region and do extremely well in this fight. Even like as a maxed out 4 star, rank 3, 5 star, he is definitely capable of soloing this fight if you have ramped him up decently. Now, I did uh, not get too lucky at all uh, just there because we dropped a level 2 without any toxic armor buffs. However, it's still working out. He's still at 69%. We're full at our 100%. A massive level 2. He's pushed to 54%. Uh, his region kicks in, but uh, we are uh, kind of quite heavily out damaging it at this point. And once again, just a reminder, it's a rank 3 win of the duck. And uh, yeah, I think that will more or less do for today's video. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's video. I hope you got a bit maybe better understanding about how he works and what he does and why so many people like him. And uh, so once again, for me, he's a character that requires a lot of care, a lot of effort, but he has extremely high power ceiling and he can be extremely sustainable. He can save you so many potions. Uh, he can save you in a lot of situations with the crazy damage output, very crazy stuff he does. Uh, but yeah, so once again, that will be me done for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit all the buttons, uh, stay notified for more videos. Don't forget to click that bell icon as well. And I will in fact catch you guys uh, soon. See yeah.